Hello everyone. With the Ryzen 3 or 5000 series uh, launch coming up, I wanted to do a guide to help you with your purchases. Before I can do that, I have to cover some important topics, starting with the RAM. It would seem that the Ryzen series has an optimal RAM configuration. What that configuration is varies depending where you read and whether or not you are doing dual channel or quad channel. I try to do quad channel um, as much as possible. The reason for that is, depending which benchmark you read, you can get upwards of 20 FPS um, improvement with quad channel over dual channel. So knowing that, um, I've been using DDR4 3000 megahertz in the PC part list I have been doing for the Ryzen 3000 series. What that will be for Zen 3 or the 5000 series, I don't know yet. But for a 3000 series, I've been doing 3000. Because if you'll notice, the ASRock recommendation for quad channel is 2933 megahertz. That's not a very common numbering for the megahertz. So I go up to 3000, which is more common. I would recommend keeping an eye out for an article like this whenever um, Zen 3 or 5000 launches. Moving on to APUs. The Ryzen family has had APUs throughout their lineups. An APU is a processor with abnormally large integrated graphics. The um, great things about the APUs is they help with certain things. Let's just say you have a scenario where a video card is starting to die or is already dead then you can still boot to your desktop using the integrated graphics on the processor. It does help determine troubleshooting and other things as well. Another good case for using an APU is if you're a streamer. Let's just say you buy the 6-core APU from the Zen 3 launch and you find yourself two years from now at 100% CPU and 100% video card then you can tell OBS to encode using the integrated graphics. I haven't seen very many tests with the integrated graphics on the APUs in terms of uh, encoding on OBS, but I would guess that its quality is going to be less than CPU or NVENC encoding. AMD graphics encoding historically has never been good. However, if it's what you got to do, it's what you got to do. The other thing I want to point out while we're on the topic of this APU discussion is that the 4750G or possibly 5750G uh, is the flagship APU coming out uh, when Zen 3 launches. This is 8 cores. Now this particular APU is close to perfor the performance level of the 3700X. Knowing that Zen 3 or the 5000 series will be 10 to 15 percent more performance than Zen 2 or the 3000 series, then this means it's going to be behind in CPU performance by possibly a big number. However, you should be able to make up for that FPS loss in other areas. RAM is one, as I was just pointing out earlier. Moving on to uh, a game discussion starting with Star Wars Squadron. The recommended non-VR system requirements for Star Wars Squadron is really odd. If you look at the processors for uh, processor for AMD, it's uh, 2700X. If you look at Intel, it's an i7-7700. This is eight cores, and this is four cores. And this tells me that it's highly unlikely that Star Wars Squadrons will use more than four cores, which means that I have no idea why this is. Somebody can do testing on it, but the only guess I can come up with is that it has to do with core clocks. It's really weird to see an 8-core in the system requirements when there's a 4-core sitting right here. On that topic, uh, I do want to point out that games historically, for the most part, have been using uh, four cores or less. There has been some rare scenarios where they have used more than four cores, 
but it's so few and far between that it has never been a concern uh, in terms of, you know, factoring it into the build. So it is perfectly safe to use a 3000 series instead of a 5000 series should budget not permit or some other factors are going on, such as a sale. It's highly likely that we'll see very good prices in the 3000 series once 5000 series launches. If that doesn't happen, then there's, of course, those holiday sales, which will bring down the 3000 um, series costs as well. Okay. Um, so with all that said, you can go any number of ways um, with your purchase decision. I would say for 1080p budget, I would get the 3600. I don't see a need to invest a lot more money just to get the 10 to 15 percent performance uh, in 1080p because I mean a 3600x or I mean I'm sorry 3600 should be doing fine enough. Now, um, I have noticed that the 3600 and 3600X have had different prices in recent times. When the 3600 has gone out of stock, uh, or at least it's being sold like crazy, then the price on the 3600X has gone down. I have seen the 3600X cost less than the 3600 at certain times. If that does happen, if the 3600X is less than the 3600, you can squeeze out 5% more performance that way. Be aware that there is a wattage difference, 65 versus 95 watts. If you're doing a 1440p um, gaming build, then I would say go up to a 3700X just to prepare for uh, things like this. Or you can go all the way out to a 5700X if budget permits. But at the very least, I would make sure it's one of the two because um, 1440p is going to use more resources than um, 1080p. This also works for streamers, too. If you're a streamer, then you are going to want those 8 cores just to be extra safe um, for any possible changes coming down the road. It's true if you use OBS Studio and budget your hardware resources well, you should only need 2 cores, 4 threads for streaming. Um, but, you know, just in case that one day that, you know, games start to use more than four cores, then it just gives you a little extra breathing room. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of where I would go with that. If you are workstation or something of that nature, then I would say consider uh, the 3900X, 5900X, or um, the 3950X and or... Um, 5950X. Those are your 12 and 16 cores. As for the motherboards on these particular um, processors, I've seen tons of reviews for the B550M Aorus Pro. I would recommend using this if you are building new, uh, as it is the only motherboard capable of using the 4750G right now, well, in addition to the X570 and A520, but for gaming purposes, uh, you shouldn't need more than B550M um, when it comes up to 8 cores. If you're going past 8 cores, then I would definitely consider a different motherboard. But that's workstation stuff. But for gaming, you should be fine on B550M AORS Pro. Uh, for the 4750G, uh, 3000, or 5000 series processors. If you are that workstation person going beyond um, 8 cores, then I would say to look at what you need first. Some workstation builds I've seen, I've only been using two M2 SSDs, though some have been using four. So... You know, it's really hard for me to make the call as to what the right thing is for this. Um, but if you can get away with two M2 slots, I would say look into the Asus Prime X570P or the uh, upgraded version, which is going to be the Asus Tough Gaming Plus. I don't have a tab for it here, but it's not hard to find. Um, the reason that you would want to use this um, well, the X570 in general for uh, going beyond 8 cores is because of the difference in 
um, the motherboards, the X570 is going to just have um, certain things like chipset uh, lane differences or um, chipset version differences, and I'll put a chart in the description for you to look at, um, which from what I've seen from benchmarks does help with the performance when going beyond eight cores. But um, yeah, that's really all I can say on this matter. If there's a particular question you have or um, you want to add to something that I said, please use the comments for that. Um, thanks for listening.